Oh. She pooped. Do you smell it? Hi everyone, so today we're filming our foster parent Q&A because we had a lot of good questions about foster parenting from people that are just curious and also people who are interested in doing it themselves. So I have all the questions written down and we're going to answer them for you, but we're going on week three of being foster parents, so I think we'll tell you how we're feeling before we get started, and I'll let you tell them first how you're feeling. I feel great. How's it going? It's going well. Uh, I think it's similar to the last video. Uh, she's doing great. She's acclimated well to us and mm -hmm. to uh, living here and to her daycare. She loves daycare. In fact, when we go to pick her up from daycare, she cries, and that's really <laughs> rude of her because we want her to like miss us all day. But we think she really likes her friends there and the teachers and uh, the playground and all that stuff. Oh, and the food. She likes yeah. to eat, and they give her lots of food. Whenever we get there in the mornings, her little friends come up and hug her and like take her away to play because she's a small, she's the youngest and the smallest one in the class. So the bigger babies like her a lot and they come and grab her and hug her. It's really cute. She's actually right behind the camera eating right now in her little play thing. So if you hear a bunch of chomping, that's why. <laughs> if you keep <laughs> seeing us looking this way, yeah. it's because we're making sure she's not choking to death on a noodle or something. She loves noodles and they're all over her whole body right now. So I wish we could show you. Maybe we can insert a photo. Oh no, it's, it's literally everywhere. It's really cute. Hi, you say hi? Okay, so without further ado, I guess we'll get into the Q&A. And I know the first question off the top of my head, the rest I have on my phone, but the first one was, what is your inspiration for fostering and did nursing influence your desire to foster at all? I'll let John tell you his inspiration for fostering first and then I'll tell you mine, even though they might be kind of similar. So nursing had a huge impact on me fostering. You know, nursing school and all of that stuff that I went through. You know, and now being in CRNA school, it's been a lot of pressure on me. And I feel like just... Oh, is that your question? Yeah. Okay. Um, my, my inspiration was really was you. Uh, I never thought that I would foster a kid. It was never on my radar when I was... <laughs> Hello. It was never on my radar when I was younger, of course. Um, I always like to help when I, where I can. And I think we started with animals and it's progressed. Now, it's something that you've always wanted to do. And of course, anything you want to do, I want to help you do. And uh, we kind of embarked on this journey together. And I got more excited about it as we went. <laughs> as we went. And uh, I will say that the foster classes and all that stuff was a bit much. But now that we have her here, she's amazing. And we know that we're helping this little girl or any of these kids, in fact. And it feels great to help them and give back yeah. when, when we can. So what inspired you? So my inspiration started with, um, I was in foster care, me and my sister when we were younger, and that's what kind of started this. I've kept in touch with my foster family, and I've always just wanted to do it ever since I was a teenager. So that started my fire to want to foster, and then when I became a nurse, um, seeing all the children that don't have stable parents or don't have homes really kind of made it go further. When I was in nursing school, I took care of kids in the pediatric unit during my clinical who didn't have any visitors, didn't have any homes, and they weren't really sure where they're gonna go when they get discharged. And then in CRNA school, I took care of one little boy who really kind of like drove me over the edge to actually start the process. And um, without telling you too much detail, it was a really sad story and we did a surgery on him and he was in foster care. So that really, I came home after that and I kind of told John, I think now's a good time for us to do this. So we went ahead and got the process started. Yeah, I think I wanted to add on what I said when I said I was in the class and it was all a lot to me. I didn't mean the process was a lot for me to take on. What I meant was in the class, a lot of the stories was a lot for me to handle. Uh, when you hear about the number of kids that are in foster care, the number of kids that go without parents or, or get taken away from their parents and that there's just so many in the system and then you hear some of their stories mm -hmm. and you're like, why weren't we helping earlier? Or why aren't we helping? And not everybody's in the position to help like we are. We understand that. But helping some way, either if that's financially or just going to volunteer somewhere and helping with these kids. Uh, there's a thing called respite where you could just babysit them, right? Yeah. Or you could just babysit them for a few days a week when, they, when they're in between placements or uh, their fosters like us are out of town. So I think that if you can and have the ability and the time and the means, please look into this and try to give back if you can. Yes. And <laughs> That's dad dad. She says dad dad, not mama. We're also going to keep fostering dogs. A lot of people ask this too. The reason we don't have a dog right now is just... <laughs> Isn't she cute? You can imagine how cute she is just by her voice. The reason we don't have a dog right now is just because we're going to be going out of town soon. Okay, this is a good one for you. Are you worried that you'll get attached? 
<laughs> well, too late. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already attached. Uh, After like one day. Right. Um, we got a little bit of a word that we might, she might be uh, going to a family member. We don't know when or who, uh, but we just heard through the grapevine that she may be. And we're like, I'm trying not to think about that, I guess. It's, yeah. like, it's like tough to think about. We know reunification is the goal and we'll be glad if she can go to a stable family member that can take really good care of her because being with... <laughs> Hi, baby. You got a cookie? You got your cookie? Being with family is the best for the children uh, as long as they are stable and able to take care of them. So, yes, we are very attached. It's going to be very hard for us when she goes. But this is not about us. It's about her. So while it might hurt us, it would be hard for us. Her life is more important, and we're willing to go through that pain for her. Yeah, I think, if, I think you'd be lying to yourself or you'd be a weird person. I'm going to speak frankly, if you said you're not attached after the first like day or two, uh, again, you go in the mindset with this, not thinking of babysitting, but thinking of like, they're yours to take care of and they're your responsibility. So it's really hard not to get attached. We do so with the dogs. I cry with the dogs. I'm sure I'm going to cry when she goes. Yes. Question number three is, will you have biological children? And I'll just go ahead and say, no, we will not. And I think John agrees. Yeah, I think this is actually really strange. I'm going to speak more frankly than she might, but... I feel like that's like the number one question we get every time when we say that we're fostering uh, the kids. And it's like, why won't you have your own? And it's, it's teach their own. I don't care if you have your own children. I do think that there's a lot of children out here that need help before having your own. But that's my own personal beliefs. Mm -hmm. But we just would not have our own and contribute to more kids when there's kids that already need help. And I am not talking down to anybody who have their own kids. That's just my own personal beliefs and how I look at it. Yeah, I completely agree. I would say the exact same thing. We've talked about this a lot before. Okay, the next question kind of goes on to that question, and it's will you adopt? Adoption is on the table for us. We went ahead and did the adoption approval process when we got approved with foster, but our reason for going into fostering was not to adopt. It was just to foster. Yeah, let me see. If adoption becomes a possibility, we'll be open to it and talk about it then, but that was not our main goal. Next question is, what is the most rewarding part about being a foster parent? Obviously her smile, that'd yeah. be it for me. Like she has the best smile in the world. And anytime you can make her laugh or smile. And that, she, yeah, and she that. likes to scream. <laughs> Anytime you can make her smile or laugh and to know the situation that they come from and to know that you're giving her a better life currently uh, feels really good. And it, it obviously it just giving back to her just makes it all worth it. Yes, I agree. And earlier she fell asleep on me and like just little moments like that where she just trusts us and knows we're taking care of her is very rewarding. I would say like the arms out, yeah. like pick me up. That's a very, very special feeling when you know that you're their world. Oh my gosh. I don't know if any of this audio is going to be usable. <laughs> I, hope you guys, I hope you guys enjoy baby screaming. If you don't, probably just stop watching this video. Um, how much does it cost to foster is the next question. And it actually doesn't cost very much because daycare is paid for by the state as long as you both work full time. And um, we get like WIC, which is women, infants, children for her, which you have to, ha you have to take what they're offering you. You're not allowed to refuse it because they have to know that the kid is getting offered it. So WIC doesn't cover all food, but it does cover like the basics, bread, um, milk, things like that. I think we signed up for it, but we haven't used it. Yeah, that's what yeah, we did. Yeah, I think it's, uh, those, some people in foster need it. We understand that they need the financial assistance and they need the help uh, with the nutrition and the food and they should take it. And what they told us in class was, even if you don't need it, sign up for it anyway, because if you don't and you skip out on it, then that tells the state yeah. that people don't need it. And then that hurts the people that do need it. So we've signed up for all this stuff and we do have this stuff and it's like vouchers. And yeah. I think it was a little bit uh, minimal. Like it yeah. was like a small amount of fruit and vegetables. Like a few cans of beans, like $9 worth of fruit and vegetables, just some random stuff. Yeah. It's supposed to be a supplement to the food, but not the actual replacement. And you, he didn't get to go to the WIC meeting, but it was really cool because we... Hi, baby. We met... Hi. We met with a nutritionist, so I brought her and the nutritionist evaluated her and told us, like, where she should be with her eating right now and gave us, like, all this information. So that was really cool. But all in all, it doesn't cost very much. Um, you, you can put your own money into it, which we have done with clothes and toys and all that stuff, obviously. But... 
you really don't need to spend that much to do it. So if you're worried about money, don't let that hold you back. And they do give an allowance per child per month. They oh, send yeah. you like a check or a deposit or something like that. <laughs> Again, this is just to help with food and supplies and diapers and stuff like that. But we've been fortunate with family and friends who have sent us a lot of diapers and supplies. So uh, that's been great. And we thank all of you. I'll let you read some questions. We're on that one. How long will you have her? So we do not know. I guess in my last video, I said we might have her for six months. We might have her for two weeks, just as an example. And people thought I was saying we'll have her for six months, but we really have no idea. Um, it depends on a lot of different stuff. It depends on the state and the social workers and all that stuff. It's not up to us. So it could, she could be gone next week or the week after. She could be here well into next year. We have no idea. We're just speculating. So. Yeah, like I said earlier, we kind of don't want to think about that. We have to prepare ourselves for it, and we have to prepare ourselves mentally that they could come knocking today. Uh, but we try not to think about that because we don't want to live in that state. Yeah. So we just pretend like she's ours and ours to take care of and make happy. And Uh-oh. You better give her a noodle. She really likes graham crackers, so I think that's what she wants. But I wanted her to eat her lunch first before I just gave her graham crackers. I've lost your questions. Oh, I hope you. Okay. 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 Are you eating the graham crackers too? <laughs> During the video? They're good. Alright, next question was, and sorry this is a little, oh, you threw on the baby on the ground. I did not. <laughs> she dropped her cracker. Oh, it's okay. Okay, so next question. Sorry this is a little choppy. We're trying to do with the baby and do this. Uh, is your family yeah. supportive? Yes. Our family is very supportive. We're the oldest in both of our families, so everybody's kind of been waiting for us to have kids, and we made it very clear that we're not going to have biological kids. So they were really excited when we got her. All right, next question, and this is one I get a lot too, uh, even, even before the baby, was how do we balance it all? Okay, I'm going to interrupt because I need to answer how we're balancing the baby, and that is because of you. Because, John, um, I go to clinical at 6 in the morning on clinical days, so obviously without him I wouldn't be able to do this because daycare doesn't open until 7, and I'm already doing cases at 7. So a uh, little complicated thing is she has to go to a state-certified daycare, so we can't use an in-home daycare that would open before 6. So she has to go to these certain ones. They all open at 7. And John takes care of everything every morning while I'm busy with uh, clinical and work. Yeah. And when I'm studying or having to do something like that, he takes care of her. He's taking her to the office when she's sick because I couldn't call in. And I'll just say we're only able to balance everything because he's able to help so much. And I think she's being more than fair because the only way I could do this at all, not even including balancing it, talking about the baby, is because of you. Like, she she's obviously has excellent motherly instincts. Or is it motherly instincts? Yeah, that's right. Or maternal instincts. She's just great with taking care of others. As uh, I say that, as I say that, you know, the she, baby cries. She gave Beamer her graham cracker, and now she's mad that it's gone. Beamer's happy. So as I was saying, the only way we could do this is because of Rihanna, uh, or the only way I would probably go into it. I guess we just all know each other and know yourselves, and I have very little patience. I've gotten a lot better as I get older, but being a single father would not be for me. <laughs> It'd be incredibly yeah. difficult. Not saying I couldn't do it. I could put. I could do anything I put my mind to. Uh, it would just be really difficult for me with everything else I have going on. But to transition in the back of that, how do we balance everything? And I think that's just something that's our strong suit. We're very good at multitasking, even though multitasking is not real. Uh, you can't really do two things at once simultaneously, but we can do multiple things and organize them. And I think we do really well at that. And so that's how we're able to do the real estate and the gym and the baby and the foster dogs and the traveling and all that. Just something that uh, we are fortunate enough to be good at. I could go into a ramble about how uh, everybody has the time, but then yeah. you need to go over to my channel. Yeah. To get that stuff. Oh, speaking of his channel, he just put up a video of a house we bought for $10,000. And you guys, did we buy it or did the company? Uh, we're not investing okay. on that one. My company yeah. bought it, but Rihanna and I yeah. are not putting our personal money into it. So I get confused because John puts our money into so many houses, but then there's also so many more houses that are just with the company and not our money. And I get really confused about which one's which. But it's also because she watch. doesn't love me yeah. and doesn't okay. know where I invest or what I do what cases during the day. What did I do on Friday? You what did surgeries? a sclomotomy and two bypasses yeah. with a ventricle ASAP. He doesn't love me either. Yeah, you've talked to that doggy. So, anyway, head over to his channel and see the house that was $10,000 and what it looks like. And 
It's what you would expect for $10,000 plus some. So it's an exciting video ah. tour. All right, so next one. Oh, this is the last oh. question. What age range and how many kids will you foster? Right now our age range is three and under. I'm guessing you guys have seen our apartment tutor and our apartment's very small. So we're not comfortable really going older than that because kids need their own personal space once they reach a certain age. Um, we also don't have several bedrooms, so we can only foster one at a time now. But in the future, if we become in a situation where we have more space and more rooms, we would love to foster sibling groups. She's dragging the camera around. <laughs> I always wanted to foster siblings, and John's interested in doing that too, and we would like to increase our age range once we have the space and the time in the space really is the issue. So. First of all, we could have a 100-bedroom house, and two is it. Two? <laughs> he would two. Take, if there was three siblings, you would take them. Oh, see that? See, yeah. You see how she says what I will do? That's because how we, I know. That's how we end up. I know, because uh, we'll have two dogs. Whoa! She's mad because we won't let her rip the camera down. We'll have two dogs, and guess who gets the third? You. you yeah, do. but you can leave dogs at home. You can't leave three children at home. Yeah, but it's, it's fun. We need dogs and children. She won't be animals. happy until I'm driving around in a minivan with, like, uh, a horse in the back and seven kids up front. All right, guys, so that about wraps up our video. Do you have anything to add? I think that's it. I think we need to uh, go change a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our foster parent Q&A. We, ha we got all the questions and kind of combined all the similar ones to get it down to 10 because we knew this video would be kind of long. And we appreciate you guys watching and following along on this journey of ours because we're really enjoying it and having an amazing time. And we'll keep you updated throughout the journey. Um, my video, Day in the Life of a Foster Parent SRNA, is coming out next week. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for starting in this video. Absolutely. I need to start getting paid for these. And we'll see you guys next week. See you guys later.